From the CUBE studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a CUBE Conversation. Welcome to this CUBE Conversation. I'm Lisa Martin, excited to talk to the CEO of Styra, Bill Mann today. Bill, welcome to the CUBE. Hi Lisa, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I should say welcome back. You've been on the Cube at a previous company, but we're excited to talk to you today about Styra, what's going on. So let's go ahead and start informing our audience who Styra is and what you do. Sure. So uh, who Styra is and what do we do? So uh, Styra is a company that's focused on reinventing policy and authorization in the cloud native stack. We're the company that created an open source project called Open Policy Agent. It's part of CNCF. And on top of Open Policy Agent, we built a control plane, a management plane, to help organizations really put OPA into production and operationalize OPA. And OPA is Open Policy Agent. That's what your that the company actually developed with CNCF, correct? So we actually founded Open Policy Agent, and then we uh, contributed Open Policy Agent to CNCF. And the real goal of contributing the open policy agent to CNCF was we believe that uh, we want to get uh, authorization de facto in the market, right? And the only way to get something out there that everybody uses is to put it into the open source and having an entity like the CNCF supporting the project. So uh, really it's about getting everybody, all enterprises and vendors to use open policy agent as a way of solving authorization for the cloud native environment. So you say Sarah is reinventing policy and authorization for cloud native applications. Your target audience, security folks, developer folks, what changes has cloud native brought to security and development teams? Sure, so what changes has cloud native brought to security and development teams? So fundamentally, there's been three changes in the marketplace. One, as you know, we're shifting from this monolithic architecture of building applications to now this new distributed architectures of Kubernetes, microservices, and decoupled architectures. So fundamentally, the way we build applications is fundamentally changed because everybody wants to have you know, scale up and scale down and so forth. Second, the way we actually develop software, we've moved now to a DevOps model where we're doing more things you know, earlier on in the cycle so we can innovate faster. And you know, we're producing code on an hourly basis versus when I joined the industry, which was you know, probably three releases a year. And then thirdly, which is, which is a kind of a major topic that all of us kind of understand is our uh, focus on privacy and security is higher than it's ever been before. And if these applications are going to be way more complex and more distributed, and we're going to innovate faster, then the way we you know, focus on security and privacy has to be done differently as well. And if we don't do it differently, then we're going to have the, all the breaches that we had in the previous generation of the app stack. And we don't want that, but you're right. Privacy and security are increasing concerns in any environment. How do you help address those and, and also with the thought of privacy and security are going to be concerns for quite a long time. Yeah, so you know, let, me, let me take a step back. So how do we address privacy and security? So at a fundamental level, uh, authorization is a foundational part of security. And authorization has never really been solved or reimagined ever for the last 50 years or so. Every application developer or security vendor has built authorization into their own stack and done it in a very proprietary way. And it's been locked away within these applications and these stacks and so forth. So what happens now when you've got a highly distributed environment is that you've got so many moving parts, you still need to apply authorization. So the way we've tackled it is by building open policy agent. And there's three fundamental kind of tenants around open policy agent that make it really ideal for this cloud native environment. Number one, it's policy as code. And everything in the market now is, everything is as code. You know, you've got infrastructure as code. So this is now policy as code. So you can describe in a declarative model how you want the policy for a system to be developed. And you can use the language called Rego to do that. Second is the fact that 
all the cloud native projects out there, which are all developed based upon open source technologies, Kubernetes, microservices, you know, Envoy, Istio, Kafka, all these kind of buzzwords you hear in the marketplace, they all integrate with open policy agent already. And then thirdly, the architecture of open policy agent is that it's distributed, which means that it's ideally suited for this distributed architecture for cloud native. And those are the three kind of characteristics of open policy agent uh, leading to developers you know, loving it. And when I say they love it, we've got, you know, hundreds and thousands of users of open policy agent. You know, when you go to the CNCF shows, you know, KubeCon, you know, uh, earlier this year, and there's two more coming this year, there's many, many talks on it. You've got cloud vendors like Google and Microsoft adopting open policy agent. You've got a lot of enterprises adopting op open policy agent. So that's really fundamentally what we've built is we've built an authorization, you know, architecture for this new world to really address the security and privacy concerns which we are which have always existed and are going to be more exponential in this new world. It sounds like you've also built a community around OPA. Can you share a little bit of information about that and how they help with the code development and even some of the other things that you're commercializing? Sure. Yeah. So uh, now what have we done on, in, from a from a community po point of view with open policy agents? So yeah, the community is a integral part of any open source project and we're lucky to have a great community uh, we've got a great community of enterprise users of open policy agent and vendors as well you know vendors like microsoft and google who are now contributing to OPA and building it up and for me you know the most important part of a community is that you learn how uh, enterprises are using your software and they share ideas and they share use cases and you're able to innovate really, really fast. And what we've learned from that is the use cases that they use open policy agent for, for instance, you know, one of the major use cases for open policy agent is for Kubernetes admission control. So essentially we, we can test the configuration of a, an application, which is described in a file called YAML before it goes into production. So it's, you know, think of it as pre-production tests. But you know, companies are using it for microservices and applications and data and so forth. So it helps us understand what they're using it for. But it also, we use it to help us develop our commercial product, which is the management control plane for OPA. So we learn about what they're missing in the open source project that we can use to build our commercial product, which is ready for enterprise use. So you've had a lot of success with OPA. Talk to me about Styridaz and why the need for that? Sure. So why do we need Styridaz, uh, recognizing that OPA is very, very successful? So the fundamental difference is OPA is a very focused on developers and it's very focused on uh, you know, a, an environment for an individual in, you know, node or cluster but it doesn't have all the enterprise features necessary for a real enterprise to go into production. So what we notice is companies use OPA for pre-production, but when they want to go into production, they need a, a user interface. They need a way to author policies, distribute policies, monitor policies, do impact analysis, and a whole bunch of other features and, and, and capabilities that are needed for enterprise you know, deployments and so forth. So that's a fundamental difference between OPA and the commercial product. The commercial product is really operationalizing OPA for an enterprise deployment. So the relationship between Styra and OPA seems very collaborative to me that what you just described with the commercial product of Syra Daz is really one that was developed based on what the OPA community and Syra have learned together? Correct, yes. Yeah. So, you know, OPA was created by, you know, the CTO, the founders of the company, saw early on several years ago the need for distributed architectures and the need for unified policy. So they left and created OPA. And from day one, they wanted to get OPA into everybody's hands. So that's why they contributed it to open source as part of CNCF. And then the next kind of you know, strategy is to you know, focus on the control apps aspects, the enterprise aspects. So yes, there's a, you know, the, the same team that created OPA is the same team that's creating the Styra DAS commercial offering as well. So from the enterprise perspective, talk to me about some of the, of the, the companies that you're talking to. I imagine any organization that's focused on cloud native, but 
any industry in particular that you see is really kind of leading edge right now? Yeah, so, you know, which industries are we talking to uh, in terms of, you know, using Styra, DAS, and OPA? Uh, what we've actually found is it's across the board. Um, and, you know, you've, we've seen in the early days that financial services and, uh, you know, high tech were using OPA, but now it's really across the board. So it's all verticals, really. And, you know, what we've noticed is any, any organization which is going through a cloud transformation project where they're, you know, either building new applications based upon cloud native, you know, app stacks like Kubernetes and microservices and so forth, or shifting to the cloud are the companies that are also adopting OPA and, you know, the Styra DAS product, right? Because it's all part of the same solution set. And what we're noticing now, and this is a fundamental difference, is, you know, platform architects and developers are kind of prime to you know, use these technologies. They learn about these technologies by going to the conferences. And unlike the past, which it was very much top-down selling from the sea level down, this is very much bottoms up. So developers learn about OPA from going to the conferences. They use it within their own environment. And then they tell their, their management that, look, we're using OPA already. We want, we're, we're missing these capabilities or they come to us and we educate them about the Styra DAS product and so forth. So it's a very different sales model as well. And that's why it's very important for ourselves and any open source company to really keep developers happy and, and provide a solution that's meeting their requirements. On that front, with so many of us and developers included working from home for the past nearly four months, we know we're doing things like this, virtual conversations, virtual events. How is Sarah helping to continue to feed and educate those developers so that they can have those, understand what you, how you can impact their, their job functions and how they can then elevate you guys up the stack? Sure. So, you know, so you know, what's changed over the last three months or so, um, you know, in the market as a consequence of COVID-19 and, you know, from an educational point of view. So what we've seen is, Fundamentally, uh, you know, in the early days of COVID-19, you know, everybody was trying to kind of get their head around how to work from home and so forth. But what we've seen across the all verticals is, you know, developers have now really focused on educating themselves. And just as a data point, and the number, the audience that we get to the OPA website uh, is as high as it's ever been for the last three months. And, you know, what we're doing as a company is a lot of, you know, training sessions, video, uh, you know, uh, you know, content, uh, write-ups, blogs, and so forth, right? And really helping the community learn, you know, about OPA and how to solve these kind of fundamental problems around policy and authorization within their environments. Uh, we've also been helped by the community as well. So there's been talks by a number of companies you know, Microsoft, Google, you know, Palo Alto had a talk. And many, many companies are talking about OPA now. And I love it because, you know, ultimately being an open source company and building a project which we want to become de facto, we want to raise the bar for security across the, the world, right? And if we can do that, then it's going to be an achievement for us. And, you know, we're, it's very gratifying knowing that, you know, we're really fixing security problems for organizations because ultimately we always want to be able to use an application or a banking service and not worry about privacy and security concerns. And that's ultimately what we're all after. But this is such a fundamental component that, uh, you know, once we want to have developers learn this now, because if they can incorporate this into their DevOps app stack, uh, then, you know, in, 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 in future years when these applications are built and they're exposed, you know, they'll be more secure. And so it sounds like maybe there's even more engagement now during COVID when everybody is at home. Tell me about some of the things that are coming down the pipe for Syra in light of all of this uh, exciting collaboration with the community. Sure. Yeah. There's there's definitely been way more collaboration as a consequence of COVID nineteen. You know, people are at home, and uh, they're focusing and they're going through you know uh, you know learning sessions and you know browsing the website. You know, going through the video content and so forth. Um, so what we're you know we're engaging as much as we have ever been. In fact, I would argue that we're engaging even more so now because it's uh, it's just a different environment to work in. 
And what we're focused on now is really adding more features to the Styra DAS product. Uh, just to step back for a second, you know, Open Policy Agent works across the cloud native stack. And Styra DAS has been focused first on the Kubernetes use case. And now it also supports microservices as well. And then what we're continuing to do is add more of those enterprise features into Styra DAS and move up and up across the stack. But it is all driven by developers that we're talking to on a daily basis. And that's leading to where the project is moving forward and the development for the roadmap and so forth. And Styra DAS was only launched in 2019, is that correct? 2019, yes, that's correct. <laughs> that's correct, yes, I, it's uh, time flies, right? So uh, yes. A lot, uh, a lot of change and a lot of development in a short period of time. That's right, and 20, 2019 was a big year for us, right? You know, we, uh, we started last 2019 with uh, uh, a soft launch at the RSA conference, and we finished 2019 with Series A funding led by Axel. And uh, yeah, it's, it's great to see how, you know, uh, the, the commercial product has been gaining traction in the marketplace, as well as Oprah as well. And I think it's, uh, it's a combination of events. One, the fact that cloud native is now really well understood. Second, the fact that Kubernetes, you know, at the beginning of 2019, it was still, you know, what does Kubernetes mean? Is it going into production? Now, Kubernetes is absolutely going into production. And there's such a desire for organizations to make sure that security and policy and compliance are resolved before applications go into production. Otherwise, we're going to have the same kind of challenges we had with previous app stacks. Well, the momentum is certainly with you. I can definitely hear that in your voice, Bill. Thank you so much for joining me talking about, Sarah, how you're reinventing policy and authorization for cloud native applications. Thank you, Lisa. For my guest, Bill Mann, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching the Cube Conversation. Thanks for your time.